Okay, dann herzlich willkommen zu Tag 2 der FSCK. Unser erster Talk heute wird in Englisch sein. Deswegen uh, wird auch meine andere Moderation in Englisch sein. Okay, so we have Nia here. She started with PCB design this year. And she will tell us some of her learnings. And hopefully you will be able to start your PCB design as of now. Thank you. Hey, I'm Nia and as... I was just introduced. I didn't know anything when I started this year uh, in regards of PCB design. Like I had the basic knowledge of school with like uh, what's there in physics class, but that's it. So what is this talk about? We will look at the steps involved you need to go through when you want to start out from scratch with zero knowledge about uh, PCB design. I will talk about some misconceptions and mistakes I made so you don't have to repeat them. And this is not a step-by-step -step guide. I don't have the time for this. Before we start, warning, it is addicting. In like the few months since I started this, I'm at almost 10 different designs I'm having in various stages. Um, yes. So please be aware of that. So before you start, have a rough idea of what you want to make, of course. And well, you should know what you're getting yourself into. Um, I hope this talk will help you um, get to know that. And one thing I can highly recommend before you start any of this is get a mentor, someone who can help you along the way. Um, who you can always ask questions if they arise, who can guide you, and also for reviews. We will come to that in a second. So let's assume we have zero experience about PCB design. Um, what and general in electronic stuff in general, apart from maybe some lingering knowledge from school. So what do we need to know? Well, we need to know the electronic basics, like how voltage, current, resistance, and so on. Like those three are parts of Ohm's law, if you remember that from school, um, how those relate. And there was also already my first misconception. Um, resistance is your friend. If you uh, actually increase the resistance, uh, you lower the power draw um, on if it's not like something which is specified by a specification like USB wants some 1.5 kilo ohm uh, resistors, if, but if it's not uh, critical to have a specific value, the higher the resistance, the lower your power draw will be. Also, you should familiarize yourself with the basic components like resistors, capacitors, transistors, and so on. Um, yes. So how can we go about this? There is literature. The one I got recommended by my mentor was Grub's Basic Electronics, but it's kind of um, lengthy and uh, blown up in, in text. It's more than a thousand pages. Um, and yes, the to-do is on, in there on purpose. I couldn't find any really better resource. Also, I asked people and I never got anything back, which is comparable to Grub's Basics. So if you know something which is comparable, please let me know so we can share that for easier learning for others. So now that we know the basics, let's talk about design decisions. So of course, you know what you want to build and it highly depends on what you want to build. There are things to consider, like what kind of complexity you want to go for. Like, for example, if you want some controller for a USB connection, there is the option to get a pre-built dev board and just use pin headers to interface with it. That's the easy route. Or you jump, like I did, head first into the deep end and uh, implement the whole USB circuitry and power delivery and so on yourself. Um, you 
maybe have to think about your physical requirements if it's like something that needs to fit in somewhere. And also please think about the firmware and software you want to run this with. I didn't and I just figured out while the PCB was in production that uh, the chip I decided to use doesn't support MicroPython, which would have been my first choice. Um, so yeah, think about firmware. Sometimes uh, firmware can uh, allow you to have easier hardware and the other way around. So once you know what you want to do and how roughly how you want to do it, start out by making a block diagram. It should show the logical blocks of your um, design, how those blocks are connected, and gives you a rough orientation for the schematic. You will probably either revise it um, or completely ignore it. Um, if you're like, yes, I know what I'm doing or something. <laughs> Yes, let's look at one of the block diagrams. This was for my first PCB. And yeah, as you can see, there are still things lacking, like the power delivery, for example, because I wasn't aware that I even need to think about this, which is why I said you need to rise, revise them. So then you go over to the schematics. So this is basically the logic of how your PCB is going to behave. And if you made a good block diagram, you should see the blocks of your block diagram reappear in your schematics. And a uh, kind of hint I got from my mentor was make it art, make it look pretty. It makes it great to look at. Um, it uh, helps you understand it and have it like... Um, good readable without many crossing wires and so on. And it also helps others when they review it. So once you've got your uh, schematics done, you probably need to pick parts for like basic things like resistors, ICs or uh, microcontrollers or whatever you probably have, would have picked earlier. But um, let's talk about picking parts because there are a few mistakes I've made here as well. First of all, you have to make decisions. Um, do you want to assemble it yourself, soldering, depending on what you know or have access to in terms of machines, maybe at your hackspace, like a reflow oven, or do you want to order it assembled by a manufacturer? If you want to get it um, assembled by a manufacturer, check the limitations they have. They may do smaller stuff, but then sometimes uh, they apply uh, higher prices if parts get too uh, small. Another thing um, uh, I ran into when I did my design was um, I wanted to get parts already assembled, but um, it turns out um, at least in the case of JLC PCB, they charge extra if you use parts which are not in the basic library. So the price exploded on that and I had to go back and pick parts of their default library. So um, if you want to get it assembled, keep that in mind and check the manufacturer you want to use for their library and um, to not incur too high of a cost. If you want to uh, assemble it by hand, I would recommend at the very least 06 or 03 if you have little experience and steady hands or even larger if you don't have any experience and maybe a bit shaky or don't have uh, good equipment at home and not access to any. Also, keep in mind availability of those parts. Resistors and so on are easy to change, but if you're uh, counting on a microcontroller and there are just uh, 10 pieces available and you may want to use it again, um, consider that. So one important thing which I made a mistake of again, um, I didn't get a full review before I started with the layout. 
uh, you should at this stage with the schematics and the parts picked, you get a full review of your uh, schematics before you uh, start with the layout. Um, simply because, yeah, if you find the issues now, you don't have to recreate the layout with the fixes. Um, and yes, I had a few issues with that. Um, first of all, I made the mistake of not getting a full review. I was just too enthusiastic to like continue and uh, just jump right into the layout without waiting for uh, my mentor to re review the schematics. And some of the mistakes I made in there was um, wired up the transistor in the wrong direction. I overlooked things in the spec sheet. I mean, for a new um, person, especially if you're dealing like with uh, bigger microcontrollers or something, those spec sheets uh, can be overwhelming and you're not, you're not knowing where to look for things. So um, keep that in mind. And I would highly recommend you uh, to give your reviewers a guide. Uh, describe your design decisions, um, why you have done things in a certain way. Uh, note which parts you may be unsure or unfamiliar with, what you have never done. Even if it's your, like your second or third project, there might be things like, yes, I'm doing I squared C, for example, for the first time. Um, and also recommended get multiple reviews if possible. Um, Cause my mentor reviewed it and they caught uh, a few things, but uh, then I gave the, uh, the data to someone else and they spotted a few more things. And I'm really thankful that I did that cause as I would have even more um, hardware bugs in my design. So now we can go on to designing our PCB. Uh, first of all, we need to set, set up design rules. You will find the limitations of your chosen manufacturer on the website. Uh, and I highly encourage you to, again, make really sure and double check the capabilities of the manufacturer. They may state that they are capable of few things, um, but sometimes it's uh, an advanced process and they charge more for that. So if you want to like be price conscious, maybe just go with uh, bigger features if you don't need um, that and save on the cost. Also then, while designing the PCB, um, don't forget about layers. I did that in the beginning a lot. I always try to squeeze things through because um, I just forgot I had a second layer in a basic two layer PCB. And another um, thing I kind of make a mistake on is uh, I placed th parts too close together. You can see this in this uh, screenshot of my um, design. This is the layout now. On the top right with the orange lines, you can see that there are components placed really close together and they were quite hard to assemble because like I didn't give, didn't give myself enough space to work with. So I would highly recommend if you have the space, use it, spread things out. It makes easier for assembly. It makes easier if you have to fix things because you made a hardware bug and so on. Now, again, get a review after your layout. Double check the footprints. I ran in this again, I made this mistake. Um, I accidentally chosen a different footprint in KiCad than I had uh, actually ordered. So um, the component was actually too small for the pads and it was a pain to like get this to work at all. And I was lucky I didn't have to reorder stuff. Um, also ask for a, a feedback on ease of assembly, for example. I didn't do that, I wish I had, then maybe the too closely spaced parts would have come up. Um, and it's your final chance to find errors, use that, this change. It's way easier to make changes in the layout than in the end to have to figure out, wait, I missed a resistor somewhere, it doesn't behave like it should, 
and I need to like now work with botch wires and all of that stuff to fix my um, mistakes. So take your time, don't rush it, get multiple reviews to really make sure you're on the safe side to have as little as possible hardware errors. So if you've done all of that, congratulations. Uh, you're waiting for your first PCB to arrive. Now, uh, um, let's get over, go over a few resources I used. We already mentioned uh, Grub's basic electronics uh, for like um, the very basics. I can highly recommend Phil's lab on YouTube. Uh, they have great videos on different things basics 101 videos as well as advanced stuff um, if you want to follow along like a full uh, STM microcontroller video like I did for my design and also very important your mentor uh, who can help you use those resources. I still have a few minutes left so let's talk again about the software issue I initially talked about. Um, you have to consider what you want to do with your software. For example, if you have like many inputs, you would think you would need a big IC, a big microcontroller with many pins. But maybe it's easier to just like multiplex them and do the rest in firmware and so on. And it turns out firmware development is, at least for me, way more difficult than the actually hardware development. I got my first PCBs in February. It took me like half a month, month to figure out all the hardware bugs. And ever since I'm still writing on the firmware code. And uh, keep that in mind that this is something you will encounter if you have a design which relies on firmware. Um, things you need to get uh, used to, uh, like for example, you don't have much memory available on many of those small microcontrollers. You don't necessarily have standard libraries available. You can just load in. Um, yeah, and in my case, I actually started learning Rust with this project. So yeah, um, keep your uh, firmware or software in mind you want to use with this uh, so you can either make your hardware design easier by using software features to um, take advantage of, or the other way around, make your software easier by like doing things in hardware. For example, one example would be um, debouncing your uh, switches so you don't have to uh, filter out noise when the switch uh, switches in firmware. So that's another thing where you can like save yourself uh, self a lot of hassle in firmware when you just you do it in hardware, with the, which is quite easy. So I would like to thank you for listening. If you have feedback or want to know stuff, you can find me on Fedi and Matrix. And thanks for listening. Thank you, Mia, for your talk. Um, are there some questions in the audience? Mr. Mm, Leidonix. Uh, two more additions on the literature slide you had uh, in the first half. I think there is, um, I think it's called Electronic Compendium. It's a website uh, in German. I think it's pretty a pretty good resource for learning the different components and how they work. And if you want to get more deep, I really can recommend uh, The Art of Electronics. It's a book written in English. It's also available as an ebook, And it's really an in-depth drive into electronics and uh, proper professional electronics design. There's a lot of things to learn. So there are two more resources you could probably look into. Thank you.
Thank you for your addition. Um, are there any more questions? Uh, thank you for your talk, Nia. How did you find mentors? Um, for me, it was actually like um, I, I've, I've thought about like PCB design uh, some years ago already, and I already installed KiCad and then took took completely wrong approaches as I know now, and gave up on it early. And then beginning of this year, I saw someone on Fatty. Um, posting about their hardware development and we uh, I just like went up to them hey uh, I want to get started with this can you help me so this was my way I guess uh, asking of Fatty is always a possibility uh, other option would probably be asking your hack space um, I know in ours is, there are a few people who know stuff about this so just ask around if someone can help you I think there is time for one more question. Okay. Um, if there are any more questions, I think me, Nia will be available at the bar sometime this day to talk about. And now, uh, thank you for your insights in PCB design. Yes.